My name is Rainy, and I'm a Dutch pagan. Today I will tell you the story of when I met Odin. Praying in my garden and sharing my heart with the Allfather, when I suddenly felt this energy. Now I'm not talking about just this little energy you go like, oh I can kind of feel Odin. No. When he comes down, you'll feel it, and you'll feel slightly afraid. This really big, massive energy that gets in your face. It's like, oof. And he basically sent me on a mission. He sent me on a path. He told me that, like, he said, you have this little account on Coinbase. For those who don't know, Coinbase is a place where you can trade, you can buy, sell Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. I've been doing this for a couple of years. I'm usually successful, but I do like small amounts and I make a little money. It's a bit of side business for me for a couple of years. But Odin knew this and he said, listen, you always pick a winner, but you always put in little amounts. Why? If you make a hundred euros, does that change your life? So I go like, no, that doesn't change my life. So Odin says, I want you to put in 10,000 euros, maybe 20. And then if you do it correctly, like you always do, you will make 100 or 200,000 euros. He says, will that change your life? So I was like, yeah, if I got 200,000 euros, that, that, that would change my life. So his energy got even bigger and he got really in my face and he said, well, then do that. Boof. And he vanished. Leaving me alone in my garden. Looking around going. Did, did this just actually happen? So in the months after that, I still felt euphoric basically. The elf father spoke to me and I was like. You know, I felt like I couldn't lose because he sent me on this mission and I felt like this was kind of this holy quest. So I was like on a mission from the Allfather. So I started putting money in cryptocurrency. I started investing more, thousands and a couple of thousand and another thousand, throwing my money around, thinking this is all great. It didn't go so great. <laughs> like two months in and I lost a lot of money. I put 15K in and I lost about 6K. Now, for your information, I work as a nurse. I have a wife and two kids. I have a mortgage. I was like already going like, shit, now I have to tell my wife I lost 6K because Odin told me to invest in cryptocurrency. That's not gonna be a pleasant conversation. <laughs> so I started thinking. I also started doubting myself. When I doubted myself, I took my runes and I pulled out a rune pool and the rune pool was always really positive. Always said for the future, oh, everything will be great in the future. So I was like, okay, I will keep going. But I also realized I was a bit blind. I just felt really good and I charged in the, in, in the cryptocurrency space. And I thought, well, Odin isn't really the god of charging blindly in the, <laughs> in the spaces. It's the god of wisdom. So I started doing more research and, 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 and more research and, you know, I started praying to Odin again, but at times like these, you know, he sends you on this mission and then you pray and then you feel his energy and you offer, you offer good stuff and you feel his energy, but it's like, he doesn't come down from his throne, man. It's like, I gave you a mission, you're on your own now. Good luck with that. So I was like, great. But eventually I kind of started learning and, and, and finding a way to trade cryptocurrency which suited me and my personality. Um, and I started making the money back. Now at this moment in time, while recording this video, uh, the world of crypto is doing pretty good. And I, I have a pretty profit. I wouldn't say profit because it's not a profit unless I have it in my bank account. I have some like Bitcoin and other stuff, but the market could crash tomorrow and I could lose half of it, you know? So I don't have 100K yet, trust me, I'm not even close. Um, 
but at this moment in time it looks like I might be successful on this quest that Odin sent me. Now I made two promises to Odin basically saying listen if I make it on this path that you sent me on and I really do make 100 or 200k I will do two things I will go on YouTube and confess my love to you <laughs> say I am a son of Odin you know I follow him and that's what that's what it brought me you know it's easy to say yeah I follow Odin people automatically say oh yeah what did I ever brought you like if this goes correctly I will no longer have a mortgage on my house people go like hey what did following Odin we never brought you well he helped me down pay my house what did Christ ever do for you did he did he release all your debts no that's what Odin does well Odin didn't do it I did it myself but you can do it by aligning yourself with Odin um, so this channel you know hit like and subscribe if you want to know if I can make it because there's a chance I could still fuck it up there's a chance the market will go down but if I make it I promised Odin I will show the world I'm a pagan I will use the money to buy a big nice car for my family I would put in runes in Odin we trust really big on the hood of on the back so everybody can see there's a pagan driving here and more importantly I will build a place of pagan worship in my garden now this basically this isn't my garden but over there is my garden I will build a pagan place of worship I will gather some folk we will raise the god poles and the names of the old gods will be spoken in the east of Holland for the first time in 1500 years now if you fellow pagans are watching this if somebody's out there is even remotely interesting interested in seeing the old god resurrected in the east of Holland like and subscribe this channel I might make it I might fuck it up Long live the old gods and let's see what happens. <laughs>He said he went to sleep one night and he found himself in a dream. When the dream began he was at home with his brother and they were discussing various things until eventually it was shared that he had to go to church. So him and his brother went to the church and it was about this time that my friend Mike in the dream realized that they were being followed by a raven. The raven casually followed them into the church and they took their place in the pews. He said at the front of the church there was a pastor, a real pastor that he had known as a child growing up, and the pastor was talking about how all religions are one and how everything in the spirit world is united. It was at this time in the church that they were passing out communion, and Mike received the communion from his brother, and it was at that time that his brother asked him, does your bird want some? And Mike thought, what does he mean by that? He'd forgotten that the raven had followed them into the church. It was then that his brother gestured to the bird and he turned around to see that the raven had been sitting beside him all this time in the pews. He offered the body and blood of Christ to the raven and the raven ate it. A short time later they left the church but it was then that Mike realized there was a massive thunderstorm hanging over the church. The thunderstorm was shooting bolts of lightning down all around the building and he looked up to the cloud and said, Thor, is that you? And the cloud responded with thunder. It was at that time that he noticed there was an ash tree at the opposite side of the parking lot filled with ravens. And when he looked at the tree, he said, Odin, is that you? at which time all the ravens in the tree started to caw all at once. By this time in the dream, he'd realized that Odin and Thor were speaking to him, and he was so emotionally overwhelmed by the experience that he began to weep in the dream. As he wept there, standing outside the church, he slowly began to realize that he was awakening, when he finally awoke from the dream, he was terrified to discover that the ash tree standing outside of his bedroom window was also filled with ravens, cawing, 
pawn, pawn relentlessly. Now, it'd be one thing if this was an isolated story, but I've had one of my viewers also share with me his experience of Odin and Thor and the Old Norse Gods. So I'm going to share with you guys a story that was sent to me by one of the viewers. He's been watching the channel for quite some time, and I always counsel people to seek an experience of God through their dreams. He says usually on most nights he will have a dream about being stalked by an entity that will hide in the shadows. He said it would follow him in the darkness and then as soon as it had him at a disadvantage the entity would strike and attack him directly. He says though one night recently he laid down to go to sleep and he found himself in a dream and sure enough the entity appeared and it began to stalk him in the shadows. He started to make his way towards a barn and quickly pulled the doors open to run inside. But he says, I could feel the entity creeping up behind me. It moved up over the walls and crawled across the ceiling of the barn. He says it was then that the entity leaped down from the top of the barn and landed on him and pushed his face into the soil. He says usually at this point in the dream he will be attacked directly and his wife will wake him up because he starts talking in his sleep and shuddering. But he says this night it was different. He says this night I felt a bolt of energy move up from the base of my spine to the top of my head and he says I invoked the deities that he worships, Odin, Thor, and Freya. At this time, he says, a storm swooped in and started to rage around the outside of the barn. The barn was lifted up off of its foundations, and a great tornado sucked the entity, the barn, and everything into the void. He says at this time, he stood up fearless in the dream, and he realized that he was free of the torment of this entity. With the rain pouring all around him, with the barn and everything sucked away, he woke up. And he said for three days he had peaceful, dreamless And so sleep. I haven't had a lot of actual, like, encounters or experiences with him. But the first one I had was very profound to the point where that's why it's taken me so long to actually sit down and talk about it. Because, I'll be honest, um, he scared the shit out of me, you guys. This was uh, right, right around the autumn equinox. I had just set up my altar to Odin um, and done that initial offering, and so it was like one of those nights right around the equinox. I had just laid down in bed, and 2020 had just been a very tumultuous year. Things were crazy. Um, I was very stressed out. You know, we didn't know from day to day what was going to happen, what the dawn was going to bring. And so I just kind of said a little prayer asking Odin to help to keep the balance tipped more in favor of order versus chaos because it was a very tumultuous year of upheaval and change. Um, you know, Loki was just all over the place with the radical change and just asking him to give us his wisdom to help mankind um, once more see the value of truth, to pursue truth and wisdom, and yeah, to just kind of yeah, help see us through that chaotic time and um, tip the balance back in order, uh, in favor of order. And as I was doing this, um, just as with my first encounter when I reached out to Freya, I kind of saw this picture or this vision in my mind's eye, if you will. Because I'm just laying there in bed, it's perfectly dark, just my eyes closed. At first, um, what I saw was that archetype that we so often see talked about and associated with Odin of this Gandalf-like wanderer figure. And that's very much what I saw. You know, the full, like, gray cloak, blue hat with the brim pulled down. He had the beard, the staff, just a friendly, like, oh, you, you called me, child? Oh, yes, don't mind me. I'm just the friendly, wise grandfather figure. He segued very quickly from that into doing a rapid 180 progression into showing me his other side. 
Odin, the the frenzied one. Odin, the the battle screamer, the warrior king, the leader of the armies, the leader of the wild hunt. I saw him transform from the Gandalf wanderer wise man figure into almost that like Theoden king aspect. I saw this um, man on his throne with the armor and the crown. It was like a crowned helm. Um, and he had, you know, this ruddy colored facial hair and beard with um, streaks of white through it. And, I, you know, I saw him in that warrior king aspect. And then from there, he transformed further. It's really hard to describe. I've tried to draw it. Um, I tried to draw it right after I saw it, even though I was terrified as I was seeing all of this. Because this was all happening, like, within the span of, like, seconds. Where he, it was just this rapid transformation in my mind from friendly Gandalf to, by the end of it, I was watching this battle-helmed screamer. You know in that scene at the end of Fantasia when you're seeing like the the ghosts of the slain and the hosts, um, basically the wild hunt, all those ghosts and like warriors riding their ghostly horses through the air, it was that. Like I was seeing that and I saw Odin leader of the wild hunt and it was kind of like a test in I think because a, it scared the shit out of me, like I said. I went from, like, laying down in bed ready to fall asleep to, like, full-blown sat up. I had to just kind of, like, get out of bed and distance myself. Like, I stepped back. Like, I was very taken aback because that's not what I was expecting. I was expecting the Gandalf guy. Oh, you want, like, you want to work with me? You, you, you think you, because you think you know, but you have no idea what you're in for if you want to work with me. So it was almost like a test. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to reveal myself to you, like, and show you that, yes, I am here. I exist. I am real. I am listening. I heard you call. But if you want to work with me, you need to be prepared for the fact that this is also who I am. I had to take a step back. I had to get up out of bed. Um because I was not ready for that. Um, I got up, I kind of went fumbling around in the dark for a piece of uh, paper and tried, I tried to draw like the first two aspects that I saw, but I was not ready to try to revisualize that third aspect, that wild hunt. It wasn't until like maybe weeks or months later that I went back and reflected on that and was able to um, put to paper what I had seen because it was that terrifying, honestly. And so if you are not prepared, like, you're gonna get smacked in the face with his power, let me tell you. But after that, he's kind of been, he hasn't really been around much. You know, he kind of, yeah, like, showed me that, like, Hey, uh, yeah, I'm here. I exist. I hear you. I'm just gonna watch now and see what you do. So whereas Freya walks the path with you and holds your hand, I knew going in to this that Odin was going to be this more aloof, distant figure and that you have to walk the path to meet him. He's not really gonna meet you halfway. You have to go to him. And so just on my quest for knowledge and my quest for enlightenment, I just wanted to start making offerings to Odin, and being a reader, I feel like um, spending time reading about the gods is is an offering and, and a dedication of your time for them. I've had one or two brief uh, visions of him. I think I, I had a brief one around Yule, where um, when I was doing offerings um, on the altar to him around that time for the Wild Hunt, and surprisingly then I kind of saw him more in his like druidic leader aspect, like of that um, priest king. And he told me I needed to, like, go out, um, well, he showed me himself standing in front, uh, like, standing in the woods, and then, like, retreated back into the trees, and I think that was just him showing me the types of environments that I need to seek him out in further. I definitely want to make more in-depth videos talking about Odin and my thoughts on him, as well as my experiences and practices involving him and Loki. Loki definitely came around when I started working with Freya, and especially once I decided I wanted to offer to Odin, he wants his share of the attention. I will make another video um, going more in-depth into Loki um, at another time, because 
yeah, he needs his own share of the attention, trust me. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you have any more um, questions about Odin and my experiences with him, but but yeah, in terms of him actually like being a physical presence or any or a spiritual presence or really any type of presence in my day to day life, it, he hasn't really been around. Um, I keep up the offerings. Um, I haven't really been doing much up there at that altar lately because I've kind of been trying to focus more on like Freya and my own um, like shadow work and whatnot. But yeah, I just try to maintain that um, relationship, keep that line of communication open by giving regular offerings whenever I have something to offer or think about it. But um, it's still pretty sporadic for me. I don't have a regular practice. I'd like to try to get into doing something weekly where it's like I'll give an offering to him on Woden's Day or Wednesday and maybe on to Freya on Friday. But you know, life gets in the way. It's hard to um, maintain a schedule, so maybe I'll get there one day, but yeah, right now it just kind of is what it is. Um, whenever, yeah, I don't think Odin really cares or Freya really cares as much. Um, Loki's the only one that really kind of starts poking and prodding when he feels like it's been too long since you've paid him um, a visit or left him something, but Odin is more aloof. He's kind of, I get the sense that he's an observer. He spends a lot of time seeking out that knowledge, but then it's also a lot about what you do with it. As as he says in the Havamal, you know, it's, it's better to not be too wise or know too much because then you're kind of just going to drive yourself crazy um, because ignorance is bliss. And I think Odin knows that better than most because he's always seeking out like prophecies and wants to know about what's going to happen in the future but very rarely is he able to do anything to change it and you know he might try to like um pull a few strings behind the scenes here and there but even when it came to the death of his own son balder or trying to prevent ragnarok he didn't do anything to prevent either of those things even though he knew they were coming so I think it's very important that um, in our pursuit of knowledge, we know what our limitations are as human beings, and we strive to apply the knowledge we have beneficially, that we know what to do with it. Um, I think that's a lot of what, what Odin tries to teach us, um, because one thing I find interesting with Odin is that unlike a lot of the like the Abrahamic God or Yahweh who punished Adam and Eve for um, eating the apple and gaining knowledge, Odin sacrificed himself to get the runes, but then he shared that knowledge with mankind. He shared the runes with us. He didn't hold that knowledge back and keep it all for himself. Um, he wants us to have these knowledge, this knowledge and the, these things that will benefit mankind and help us um, attain that higher wisdom. But he's also, he knows... He knows when to hold them and when to fold them, I guess, to <laughs> quote the Kenny Rogers song. Um, he's the gambler. He's questing for that knowledge, but he's also more of just an observer. And so that's kind of the sense that I get from him overall, is that he's kind of just watching to just see what to we're doing. To the Ravencraft Arts Interview Project. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, first off, I just kind of wanted to have you introduce yourself, kind of where you're from, and uh, how you got started with rune art. Yep. Okay. So um, at the moment, I'm living in Indonesia. You know, one thing led to another, but um, I used to live in Australia. Uh, and a few years ago, there was, um, you know, bit of a life-changing experience that um, led me to think that I'd be better off living in a secluded place. Uh, so here I am. And what got me into the runic arts, um, you know, first first of all, I've got to say that I didn't know about, you know, Nordic culture or the runes or Galdra Stafir or, you know, any, anything like that. But um, it was a bit of a Okay, if I were if I was going to reveal all of the, all of my story, it's probably going to sound 
a bit crazy. People would probably think that I'm a bit of a wacko, but um, okay, to cut it out, to make the long, long story short, basically an old man with one eye found me. Um, I was very, um, I was, I was very sick at the at that time, and um, one of the conditions that he would let me live is that um, I need to basically abandon the church and um, live according to what he wants me to do, and that's how I know about the runes and the Galdrastafir and you know that sort of thing. So yeah. So, yeah. That's that's what got me into the runic arts. Yeah. Wow, so that's, that's amazing. Unlike, yeah. So unlike um, other artists that you know learn about this um, runes and Nordic magic through um, you know like online media or through books, um, I've I've only known that these things are actually called runes after my associations with the internet. I'm like. This is the things that I've been seeing. So it's actually called runes. And the old man with one eye, um, that's that's how I knew him. I'm like, you know, so the old man the old man with one eye, I didn't know his name, but then I start researching uh, you know, after 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 a few months and I actually found out that this guy was actually worshipped by the Germanic folk and they called him Odin. So I'm like, okay, so cool, he's got a name. So yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. how I got into the runic arts.